everybody. If you'd like to make your way to your seats and everybody stand with us, we'll begin our Wednesday night, Wednesday evening service. Amen. It's good to see everybody here tonight. And uh, we have uh, uh, had just a little bit of difficulty, like the super smallest speed bump. But uh, everybody's doing good, not having any problems. And, and uh, as it stands, we're going to keep on having the church. Amen. 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 So uh, um, we're not we're not uh, not having any any more reports. And so everything's going good. But we got to pray. Got some folks sick, different various things, stomach situations, and and uh, it's allergy time and crop planting time. And there's a whole lot of normal stuff. Amen. If you sneeze, it's all good. We'll all say bless you at the same time. Amen. Don't have to try to hide. It. But uh, thank you for coming tonight. We're excited about church, about the word of the Lord. We're going to pray. Uh, Sister Virginia is in need of prayer tonight. Brother Wimpy is in need of prayer. We want to remember Sister Barker, Sister Norman, Brother Dole. Uh, we want to remember several unspoken requests. Uh, remember Joe Childers. Um, and uh, we've, as I said, we've got a lot of special requests. Sister Heidi needs a touch. Does anybody over here have a request on my right? Right over on this side. Hey, well, Sister Rita and Sister Lois need prayer too. Here in the middle. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sister Terry. Yes, ma'am. Mom. Yes. I saw that. Brother Ira. Yes, sir. We'll do that. Yes, ma'am. All right, Brother David. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, let's remember her. Uh, Sister Nadine. All right, got a lot of unspoken requests, as I said. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody up here? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Amen. Let's take these knees to the Lord in prayer. Remember the service. God, we love you. We honor you, we appreciate you, we believe in you, the power of your word. I believe, God, that when we pray, good things are going to happen. Be a fence all around us, and you've protected us and helped us in so many ways, and you're going to keep doing it. I pray over every sickness that's mentioned here. I pray against cancer and diabetes and heart disease. And I pray against COVID and COVID symptoms. And I pray, God, against any and everything that will come against the people of God. I pray against depression and discouragement. I pray, Lord, against folks that get
love that song. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. Again, thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We want to let you know that Brother Cody Pipkin has retired from the praise team. He started teaching Bible studies, and he just said for some reason he needed to step down. But I heard through the grapevine that he wasn't sure he could be saved and still sing on the same platform as Sister Meredith. So uh, we, uh, that's just a joke. I just told him I was going to give him the, I told Casey I was going to give him the business tonight. But uh, Brother Cody's teaching Bible studies and he's doing a whole lot of other things in the kingdom of God. And we're so excited about that. We appreciate everything he's done. Amen. Amen. And, uh, he said, I don't want anybody to think I'm mad at nobody or nothing. I say, hey, that's cool, bro. That's cool. That's all right. If you are mad, I understand that. Some of these folks up here, you know, but hey, we, we get our pray our strength in the Lord. I, these people right here, they keep me on, keep me prayed up, fasting. And uh, so, y'all don't think that's funny, do you? And they're like, amen, brother. We believe you. We feel you. Amen. We're going to give him the offering. And uh, everything's all good, I promise you. Everything's good. We just had a chapter in our small group book about humor, and I was trying it out. It didn't work all that good, but I was trying it out anyway. But uh, um, uh, I want you to, if you can, stay focused with us tonight on the word of the Lord. Uh, the Lord has done some incredible things this week bringing us to this word. So I want you to do your best to stay focused tonight. Um, we're going to give our evening offering, and uh, the, all the pans are fair game. The evening tithing and offerings, you can, of course, use Givelify. You can mail it in, post office box 477 in Madden, Missouri. You can do it through PayPal on our website, and then it's not happening so much now, but folks were calling us to come by, and if you need us to do that, we certainly will. If uh, Sister Scarlett will put the uh, uh, prayer up there, I want us to... Keep praying this. We're going to keep praying. It isn't turned into outreach. Amen. Amen. People notice this, and, and we've had people asking for copies of it because the prayer of faith works. It's all it is, is the prayer of faith. And uh, God has blessed us tremendously. We're excited about that. So let's pray this prayer. For the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Rest down, shaken together, and run over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, Checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you bring your offerings and tithing forward, and let's worship one more time with the praise team.
here in the house tonight. Please be seated. Like for Riverbend kids to come, line up across the front. And uh, I'll tell you what, these babies is learning the books of the Bible. And uh, they got songs about it. And Yes, sir. You can go to Amos. You can. You want to do it in front of everybody? You don't? I must have missed Amos when I was learning the books of the Bible. <laughs> yeah, I missed Woof, Woof too. He <laughs> said. All right, y'all head on back. Go ahead, Will. Show them how it's done, buddy. Uh, students, Riverbend ignited, can head on back. This, uh, don't have a handout tonight in case you're looking for one. Um, you may want to take some notes, but uh, um, I, uh, I was mowing the, well, this actually came to me first last week. I was watching a, early in the morning, I was watching some preaching. And the old boy just said something in the course of his message. It really didn't have anything to do with his message. And I just started feeling the Tetris, Holy Ghost Tetris start playing in my head. And things start coming together. And I sat down and began to write out part of this Bible study. And, and then uh, I was mowing Monday morning. And uh, things, same thing. Brother Terrence, the Lord just started dealing with me. Has anybody ever found out the Lord speaks to you when there's noise? Like mowing, I love it, Brother David. I get get behind, I push them on my yard, but uh, I get, shuts out all the, the noise and the Lord just begin to deal with me. I'm lying, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I got in the house and Brother Dainsworth had texted me. We shared thoughts and stuff back and forth and he gave me some scriptures to read. He said, read these, see what you think about them. And I promise the goodness crossed my heart, hope to die with a thousand needles poked in my eye. It was exactly what the Lord had just laid on my heart mowing grass. I mean, one particular place, like word for word. And uh, so anyway, I've been enjoying it, but we're going to bring part one of it to you tonight. And then by the help of the Lord, at least part two next week. Um, Luke, the 15th chapter, this is where we'll be going to tonight, verses 11 through 17, and then we will go to the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 through 23. And uh, I want you to know the Lord's coming, folks. Yes, He is. He's coming soon. And I feel like he's getting the church ready. And uh, so uh, I have taught along this same line before some new, newer things I've got with it and, and a newer title. But the title that I want to speak to you about tonight is The Prodigal Who Never Makes It Home. Part one. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And with those verses opens up the parable, the story commonly referred to as the prodigal son. Now, I'm going to, by the help of the Lord, break this down in, in a new way, and then it's going to launch us into a Bible study for next week. Um, verse 13 says, And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. What does, he goes to his dad, 
and says, I want my inheritance that I've got coming to me now. The Bible says he divided unto them his inheritance, which we know there's an older brother. He got two-thirds, and the, the younger son got one-third. That's the double portion principle that you hear the Bible speak of so often. So it was not uncommon. It had happened before. It wasn't like it was any, any unreasonable kind of deal, except probably a little bit of cattywampus fact that the younger son is the one that went and asked for the inheritance because he is going to get the lesser inheritance. But then the Bible says not many days after, what does that tell us? Didn't wait too long. And he had a plan in place when he went and asked for his inheritance. Right? right? right. He, he, didn't, uh, he didn't all of a sudden get a wild hair. But when he went and asked for his inheritance, he had a plan already in place. And then the Bible says, and I felt this very strongly. I want you to please hear the word of the Lord this, this evening. Those of you that are watching online and that will be watching online shortly. I'd like for you to hear the word of the Lord. He gathered all together. I realized something. He really didn't gather all together. He gathered all he was willing to wait on. The father was still growing and making money. Their productivity was still happening. Business was good. He went and got his part of the inheritance before dad tapped out. So he actually cut himself short because he wasn't willing to wait till it was time. Are you with me? So he gathered all together, but it wasn't all he could have had. All right? It was just all he was going to wait on. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost already. I know this is a word from the Lord. Then the Bible says he gathered everything he had and he took his journey into a far country. And so I ask him the question, why did he need to go to a far country? Why was it that he had to go? Why did he need to go so far away? And then one doesn't have to think about it very long until you realize he wanted his part, but he did not want the oversight of his father to get in his way. And what his father meant and represented to the community, he had to get a long way away so he could be free. He didn't want anybody to be able to reference what he was doing and who he was doing it with. And he had to be around like-minded people who had the same values as him because he wanted to be free. And there, in a far country, way far away from his father, from his stability, for what was familiar there, he wasted his substance. Now understand, I've already told you this. His substance was limited. And it had an end to it. Now hear me now. While it was still daddy's, it was still growing. But when he took it away from daddy, it automatically became limited. Why did it become limited? Because of who he was. Hold on to that. It didn't have to become limited, Brother Terrence. He had had a good example. He had been connected to a successful thing that was going. It didn't have to be limited, but it was limited. Because it was at his house on the farm where the flow of substance came from. His perspective of disconnecting didn't include seeing his father's house as a source. He already has a messed up perspective where he viewed the father's house as restrictive when in fact it was the source of a wellspring of all he had. And his substance was limited. And there he wasted his substance on riotous 
this living. This is where the word prodigal comes from. Prodigal is not found in the Bible necessarily. But the word riotous means wasteful, prodigal, thriftless. Which we would call what? Irresponsible. Okay? Irresponsible. With no thought past the moment. No counting the cost. He just had a plan to go into another world and have as much fun as he could have and he wasted all of his substance of a riotous living. In verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. Everybody say want. want. And when he had spent all, what does that tell us? He took what his dad had given him and he found something that in his mind was more valuable than what he'd been given. Right? Because he was willing to trade his substance for whatever that was. So, he found things that he valued over his substance. Things that he considered to be worth everything he had been given of his father. So now he's, he's wasted his entire substance on unruly, chaotic, living for the minute, living. And now he has nothing left. Now I'm going to start teaching. There arose a mighty famine in that land. Now let's talk just a minute. In Bible days, Bible times, what caused a famine? Drought. Drought. They didn't have grocery stores, Brother David. Drought affected the grain which affected corn, wheat, and what else? The animals, because now they have no water to drink and no food. Now, God is working. There's a famine that's come. And who's in charge of the rain? Job 36 and 27 and 2 Chronicles 7 and 13, they tell us God makes it rain and God stops it from raining. So the timing, he ran out of money when the famine hit. Make, hear me right now as I tell you this, and I feel it very strongly, and I felt it strongly again. The land will suffer when God's people are in the wrong place. A famine struck a far country and God was working. Now, I'm fixing to get pretty right, pretty real in here tonight because I'm talking about a prodigal who never makes it back home. We like this happy ending, Brother David. We like this happy ending. And he began to be in want. The famine and his foolishness start working together. He got his wish. He's living free. He's his own boss. He's away from the stigma of the, the stability of the father and the reputation of the father. But now the rain has dried up and the food has dried up and the famine and what he's been working for are now working together. He worked really hard to be broke. He worked really hard to be in this position. It ain't daddy's fault. It ain't 
his older brother who's a jerk's fault. He's got nobody to blame but himself. He worked hard to get where he is. But now the Lord is working with him. Right? How do we know that? The Lord makes it rain and dries up the rain. If there's a famine, that God, then God's got his hand in it. Second Chronicles chapter number 7. He says, if I tell the rain to stop, it stops. But if my people which are called by my name, that's where that comes in at. All right? When, we, when the Lord, that's Second Chronicles 7 and 14, which everybody talks about, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, they're trying to pray away the judgment of God. They're not praying away coincidence. Because the Lord has dried everything up and he's put the pressure down. And hear me right now. That will happen in order for the Lord to position his people where he wants them to be. And he began to be in what? I think that's not a play on words. I think it's very important. It was the beginning of what in his life for the first time ever. It was a unique experience to this young man. Something he never dealt with because he had his whole life lived beneath the covering and the provision of his father when he was at home and when he was in the world. Right? What he was living on out there was what his father had given him. Until he spent all and the famine came. Let's talk about want real quick. Comes from the Greek word hysteria. And it means failing to fulfill a goal. Means to be in lack and unable to meet the need at hand because you're all run out. This state of lack naturally results when a person misses out on what is vital. Hear me right now. When you or I or your babies or your loved ones get out of the will of God, we cannot try to make it okay to be there. I don't care how much you love them. If the Lord shuts down the rain, do not pack a water hose over to their house. Y'all know I've taught this before, and you know the Lord wouldn't throw it on me unless there was a reason for it. I want you to hear me right now. If you get in the way of the Lord, you'll be responsible for the prodigal not coming home. Uh -huh. Went to church. He taught the exact same thing. He said, "Parents are hindering their children so much by doing exactly what you're saying." Yes. It's like I couldn't even get away from the message. <laughs> yeah, wasn't none the rest of us in Kentucky, was we? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another translation for the word "want" means to suffer. To suffer want. So now he's in a mess. His world has blown up. I really want to minister right here. I haven't brought you anything new yet. I really want to minister right here. Everything is working like God wants it to. For the first time in his life, he's broke. He's destitute. And he began to be in want. Things ain't worked out like he thought they were going to. Hear me right now. It never will. It never will. I can testify about that. All right, it's not going to work out. When you get full of yourself and you go out and decide, I can do this my own way, Trust me, you will reap what you sow. It's the law. 
I can't imagine for the life of me, hear me right now, I cannot imagine for the life of me anybody walking away from God in this day we live. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it, but it's happening right and left. It's happening right and left. Suffering what? So there's no money left, a famine has come, and everything is positioned for this old boy to get where he's supposed to go. Now, I don't know how I missed this before. But Brother Larry, can you give me verse 15? And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Can you imagine in your own life those of us that have had prodigals who have walked away and done their own thing and when you start seeing that it looks like circumstances are going to put the pressure on where they got to start making their way back to God and they go and they join themselves to some doofus out there in the world. Can I tell you what that word join means? It literally means, literally means he went and glued himself to a citizen of that country. Now this opens up an understanding for us because this right here is where a lot of us fail. A lot of us fail when our loved ones, we see things begin to start changing in their life and it looks good, but then they don't do what we want them to do. So guess what we do then? Go stupid. Lose our back. Talk about them to everybody. Can you believe this has gone wrong and 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 he or she is still hanging out with all them losers. It ain't working out like I want it to. Do you understand? It's working out just like God wanted it to. It's working out just like God wanted it to. This opens up an understanding into the need for one of us that's struggling to first seek to satisfy. Uh, let, let me back up just a minute. You understand that pride is still in this old boy. He may be in want, but he hadn't been humbled yet. Because, hear me right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. You know what? In his mind, everybody back at home still thinks I'm living the high life. I got to keep, got to keep fronting. I got to keep this front up. So he, he glued himself to a citizen of that country. You understand, in his mind, he's going to fix the want on his own. Because in his thinking, hear me right now, in his thinking, and you and I are not going to get it. Stop trying to think for people that are living out there. You cannot, you didn't understand why they left. You're not going to understand why they are. Put them in the hands of God, somebody that knows what's going on in their life, and let him work. Listen to me right now. If they walk away from the Lord and walk away from your house and start living like the devil, stop telling them they're okay. Stop telling them how proud you are of them. You don't have to stop loving them, but you sure enough don't have to become part of the problem. Some of us don't like that. And some of you, you're amening me right now, but you better keep on amening me in a little bit. He glued himself to a citizen of that country because in his mind, he still viewed that far country as his own personal paradise. He's messed up in his mind. Do you understand that? He ain't thinking straight. And you and I, Going nuts with the bazooka of good sense ain't going to help him think straight. 
You don't have the ability to knock sense into nobody. It's going over about like it did before, Sister Marie, but it's still true. It's still true because I'm fixing to connect to recovery class. I'm, I've told you all this before, and I'm going to tell you again. If you don't go to recovery class at least one time, you are cheating yourself. They teach me something every time I go there. I ain't making them better. They're making me better. And if you think you're too, listen to me. You may not have ever got drunk, ever popped a pill, ever shot or snorted anything, but you're struggling and need to be recovered yourself. And one of the things we need to be recovered from is trying to be God. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't you look at me like I've lost my mind. We've been filled with the Holy Ghost, forgiven of our sins, but one of the greatest failures that you and I have is we still don't trust him to be him. We want to do his work for him. Don't make, please don't make me start writing a book about this. I'll change the names for privacy's sake, but you'll know who you are. See, Sister Maria, we want revival. And we pray and we fast and we cry out to God for our prodigals to come back. But every time the phone rings and it's their name, we do whatever they want because we love them. No, we don't love them. We just want to feel better about ourselves for doing something for them. Oh, come on now. Yeah, I ain't said this in a while. I need Brother Pete in here right now because I feel a knock him out John spirit coming on me right now. And the citizen of that country sent him to the field to feed swine. That is a outright ridicule, making fun. It is the lowest of the low that you can do to a Jew. And the prodigal son still hasn't come to himself yet. He's still messed up in his thinking, but God is working. He's still got a messed up perspective. It was a mess. Up. Oh, I've, I, I can't wait to get to the next part. You won't hear this in Kentucky, Sister Maria. If you do, me and you both going to be like, whoa. Still hasn't come to himself. In his mind, this new job he just got is going to fill his want. It ain't. He doesn't know. Right now, he doesn't know that when that old boy said, yeah, I got a job for you, hog farmer. He doesn't know that when he turned around and went to the field, they laughed at him. They ridiculed him and they made fun of him because he thought they were his friends. We're learning in the book right now, they ain't his friends, but he still thinks they are. And when you attack them, you're attacking his friends. Oh, am I still doing all right, Sister Maria? Please say amen once in a while because the rest of this bunch out there, they got me nervous. Okay, no, I'm not really nervous. I got a word from the Lord. He's still got a messed up perspective. The famine and a lifestyle of want, of waste. They haven't worked yet. So in your mind, what does impatience look like right here? How do we behave when this happens? When it looks like everything in their life, we just know they need to come to God right now and everything's perfect, but they're not doing it. And now we're laying awake at night frustrated because we just know it's supposed to work and it ain't worked yet. He done went and made friends with some hog farmer. I just knew when he ran out of money, Brother David, and when the famine hit, that he was going to come on back home and realize things was better. But, oh, he got worse. He went and got a job as a hog farmer. He glued himself to a citizen of that country. And I can see this happening. They're trying to destroy him. They make fun of him and they ridicule him and they laugh at him. And I got to fix it. I got to make it all better, Brother Terrence. Uh, am I making sense? I got to make.
make it all better because that's my job. And if I don't make it all better, everybody's going to talk about me. Ain't that the truth, Brother Shannon? If I don't do this, I know I shouldn't. Please don't come to me ever again. Please don't come to me ever again. It insults me and you both when you say, I heard you preach we shouldn't do this, but my situation's different. No, it ain't. The Lord wouldn't tell us this if we weren't part of the problem. Am I doing all right, Brother Ronnie? Yes, sir. Okay. Brother Kevin? You know, Pastor, the, those folks you were with, using them up, spitting them out. Uh-huh. That, everything that he brought, using them up, and now they're going to take final dignity. Dignity from them. But here's what we got to see, Brother Ronnie. Thank you for saying it like that. That is God working. That's right. Jews didn't mess with them. It was, you know, he's, he's probably thinking, they think we're the dog when we come in. That, what I can do oh, that's a great point, Brother David. No. I remember when he was a holy roller. I remember when he thought he was somebody. Now I got him. Right. Let me show you what we do to somebody around here, Brother Shannon. Mm -hmm. And here he's got to get the prodigal. I can tell you from experience, it has to happen this way. But now I can look on the other side of the fence. He's also ministering to people. We have a we we have a desire. I know this from now working in recovery. We, if we're real honest, we want to serve other people. We really want to help other people. But we still like to be a hero, right? And, which is being God. Absolutely. And if, What we're working on tonight is learning to see that my baby's feelings being hurt is God working on him or her. But I just can't stand it. Then you better pray through. I'm about to get right in here in a few minutes. I'm about to get right. This lesson I'm sharing with you is one of the hardest lessons I've ever learned in my life, but also one of the most rewarding. Let God be God. And we're going to have the revival that we need to see. Verse number 16. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Look in the New Living Translation. I forgot to give it to Brother Larry, but I'll just read it for you. The New Living Translation, Luke 15 and 16 says, The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. Now we've taught that for a long time that he was eating the slop that the hogs ate. That's not true. He wanted to, but he couldn't. Because see, Brother Cody, God was working. But no one gave him anything. Verse number 17, the first one, two, three, four, five, six words. It's all we need for this verse. And when he came to himself, this is where we wanted to get. This is where we had to get. And when he came to himself, now let me teach to you just a little bit right now. You know, understand when he came to himself means it's referring to his thinking and his reasoning process. Because until now, he thought he was all right. Until now, he thought he still made the right decision and he didn't have no regrets. Because this citizen, this hog farmer, he was going to get rich, slopping hogs. You understand how his thinking was messed up? You know he wasn't going to get nothing. All right? 
So I got to ask you right now. The Bible says when he came to himself. So I want to ask you, help me, help me figure out a little bit. When did he get lost? I'm going to tell you it was before then. I'm going to say it was before then. Are you ready? Because now we're fixing to tie together. I'm going to set the stage for part two. Here's what happened. He became intoxicated with the allure and the promises of a far country while he was at his father's house. But how did it happen? How did he lose sight of that which was essential and integral? How was it he was living? Help me, Holy Ghost, right now. He was living in the blessing and got messed up. How did he lose sight of that which was essential and integral to his life, to his destiny, to his very survival? How did he get lost and lose his mind in his father's house? We're about to go there. Are you ready? I mean, are you really ready? We're about to go there. Three things. Pride. Say, how do you know he was prideful? He went to his daddy and said, give me what's mine. It wasn't his. He didn't earn it. He didn't work for it. He didn't appreciate it. He didn't value it. But he had a plan. I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to go where I want to. I'm not going to have to live under this oppression anymore. Yes. Yeah, he said, you ain't dying fast enough for me. Truth is, feels like you're killing me living here. I can't live here no more. I got to go. Pride. Give me what is mine. Here's the second one. Sister Stacy. you'll find this ironic after our conversation three or four weeks ago. Fat. Maybe that's not a good term. How about full? Abundantly full. Not hungry. Here's another one. Are you ready? Lazy. Prideful. Full. And lazy. We learned it when we were little boys. It's a bad mistake to come to mama and say, I could have put that on Facebook. I'm a slow learner, but it's a bad thing, Brother Ray, to come to mama and say, I'm bored. But we learned when we were little boys that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. I want you to hear me right now. This is not a political discussion. But do you know that the United States of America recently went over 50% of our citizens no longer work? The last count was 52% of the United States of America does not work anymore. Now, don't, don't get offended. If, if you work till you can retire, more power to you. I'm proud of you. You're part of that number, but I'm happy for you. I can't wait to my turn. All right? That's not what I'm knocking. What I'm saying is, I got a, a message from a friend of mine yesterday that works at a, at a blood place, and he said, we have started, we now hire everybody in at top pay. They don't have to wait to top out anymore. You want to know why, Brother David? They can't get nobody to work. Now hear me right now. I'm not being ugly, and I'm not being political, but you want to kill a church? Stop working. I'm not talking about making a paycheck either. I'm talking about creeping over into the house of God. 
Because, Brother Larry, I'm going to bring it. I've been wanting to bring it out in elements. I may do it again, and if I do, y'all just say amen. But Brother Larry told us uh, that one of the reasons why, and Sister Stacy brought it up in elements, uh, why do people struggle worshiping now, and why can new people come in? And the Holy Ghost moved on me, Brother Terrence, uh, and they told me to tell everybody because we're too fat on blessings. We take it in and take it in and take it in, but Brother Larry, where are we pouring it out? You understand that this old boy was lazy. You say, how do they know that he was lazy? Look at his life. If he hadn't have been lazy, I feel the Holy Ghost moving on me right now. If he hadn't have been lazy, he wouldn't have took his daddy's stuff and went and just blew it on having a good time. But he would have took it and he would have invested and he would have bought him a business and he would have bought him some cattle and he would have done something with it. Hear me right now. Please hear me as, I, as, as the Spirit tells us. Uh, uh, Brother Shannon, uh, I'm going to watch that when I get home. Uh, but there's a there's a, a thing that called Chosen that Brother Shannon was watching. And the Lord said something to a man. He said, if you're my disciples, I'm going to require a lot of you. Hear me right now. I don't mean to be ugly, but there's nobody. There's no such thing as retirement in the kingdom of God. Oh. Say, so give me what's mine. That's pride. He was full. Remember what, what did he say when he came to himself? He said, I know how things are at home. They've got bread enough and to spare. You know what that means? I ain't never wanted while I was at home. I never wanted while I was at home. And he was lazy because he went and blew it all on riotous living. He wanted something for nothing, and he blew it with no effort to invest it, work with it, etc. Hear me right now. The reason why the prodigal and you and, and you, y'all both been messing with my head a whole bunch, a whole bunch. When these guys keep talking about, Lord, I want to be hungry, I want to be hungry. The reason the prodigal ended up in the hog pen is he had never been hungry. He had to get hungry, and he had to be let to get hungry. If somebody's feeding him and if somebody's providing for him, he never gets to the place where he comes to himself. He had to be allowed to be hungry. It doesn't work if anybody gives him anything. It doesn't work. Now, Help me, Holy Ghost, right now, because I'm already feeling scared. I want, I want you to know right now, I ain't backing down on nothing I'm saying. Even if I go home and I beat myself up about it, and if tomorrow I can't hardly even, I'm not joking, this is not a joke, if I can't hardly even roll out of bed because I'm so depressed and discouraged, uh, uh, everybody's going to be mad and everybody's going to be upset because I read in the book of Ezekiel this morning, Sister Maria, if you hold off on the truth, Brother David, you're a false prophet. If you, rain, if you hesitate on telling somebody what the Lord told you to tell them, you are a liar and a false prophet, and the Lord will shut you down and take you out of the way. I want you to know I like being here. I like being, and I like being part of this revival, and I like being part of people that say, Preacher, preach to me some truth, and preach me something that's going to help me stay. I'm tired of living this halfway mediocre life. I want to go all the way with the Lord. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, 22, and 23. From that time forth, Jesus, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. You all notice this real quickly? This is just another example that the Lord told them what was going to happen. They're going to beat me up. They're going to ridicule me. They're going to shame me. They're going to kill me. They're going to put me in the grave. But I'm getting up. Didn't get it. They didn't get it. Look at here. Then Peter took him. I read one place, Brother Terrence. Come here. I read one place 
Jesus said, hey, they're going to beat me up. They're going to shame me, embarrass me, and they're going to kill me. But I'm going to rise the third day. I read one place where Peter actually took him, grabbed a hold of him, accosted him, made a big deal about it. You can be seated. Thank you. And he told the Lord, ain't happening on my watch. It's not going to happen. I'll put a stop to that. Not while I'm around. Let me tell you right now. I don't care what happens, but that ain't happening while I'm here. He said, that's a furthest thing from the truth. As far as I'm concerned, that ain't happening to you. And Jesus turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus only said that two times. The first time was in Matthew chapter number four in the wilderness when he said, get thee hence, Satan. The word Satan means adversary, enemy. He said, get thee behind me, adversary. It's the same terminology he used when talking to the devil. Look what he says. He said, thou art an offense unto me. That word offense means a stumbling block. Please hear me. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. He turned around to Peter and said, get out of my way. You see, it's got to happen. Peter said, no, not on my watch. It ain't happening. And the Lord said, you're a stumbling block to me. You are in my way. Who sees that, Brother David? Who sees that? He said, Peter, you're an adversary. You're in my way. The New Living Translation, Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You're a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Now I'm coming down the home stretch. We're about to go. The disciples are all gathered around. Jesus says, now we know very clearly, does anybody in here think Peter really understood what Jesus was saying? Not at all. Third day, he would know where to be found. Hid in a closet somewhere. He didn't grasp what the Lord was saying. Not any way, shape, form, or fashion because the Lord said, got to happen. Peter said, ain't happening. And he's all vehement and he's all making a big deal. So here's the picture. The disciples are all given around. Jesus says, they're about to ridicule me, make fun of me. They're going to kill me and put me in the grave. And Peter says, not happening on my watch. And he grabs a hold of him and shakes him. What was really happening right there? Huh? Making a scene. Trying to be a hero. Trying to be God. And he wanted everybody to know it. Without Calvary, Brother Terrence, we don't have any hope. But Peter, he really didn't understand what was going on. But he understood enough to know that he wanted everybody else to know he was going to try and stop it. And the Lord said, Pedro, you're working with the devil. This has got to happen, but I don't want it to happen. See, I love them. That's my baby. I don't want it to happen. I don't want them to suffer. I don't want them to have to be hungry. But the book says if he didn't get hungry, he don't come to himself. Peter said, he's telling Jesus Christ, I know better than you. He rebuked him. And Jesus said, get out of my way, devil. Get out of my way, adversary. Get out of my way, Satan. Part of Peter's vehement opposition to Jesus' declaration was that he wanted everybody to see that he was trying to do something. By virtue of his actions, he was letting him know, I care more about Jesus than anybody. Y'all didn't say nothing. Y'all didn't do nothing. But I'm trying to stop it. 
And the whole time the Lord is saying, you can't stop this. You don't want to stop this. I'm telling you right now, when the famine comes and they've spent everything, you're going to have to let them be hungry till they come to themselves. If I know how much he loves, and if I understand the power and magnitude of his love, I will trust the Lord. If I do it and it's not his will, I have become God, and when I become God, he cannot be God. Please hear me right now. When I try to be God, he lets me, Brother David. And when I try to be God, he can't be God. Because he's not sharing I think it's five verses apart. He says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I got big plans for you. But before they're going to come to pass, I got to get some things out of you. You ain't God. I'm not God. I cannot be God. If I insist on being God, then God can't be God. What is it when the Lord sends a famine and causes him to be broke and I give him money and I give him water? I have enabled. I have become God. And I want you to hear me right now. He's never going to come to himself. Mentally, he, wouldn't you put your own self in the pig pen? Do what now? I said mentally as a, if the father... Oh. That's why I preached the last time, don't make the hog pen a safe place. Because in order to enable them, you've got to go where they are. And if you go where they are, you left the house under the care of the older brother. And he's a ding -a -ling too. Yes, sir. Oh, Brother Kevin, you want to preach? It's the, true, it's the true story. When we fast, we force ourselves to be hungry. But I want you to hear me. There's, a, there's an area of revival that we're missing out on because we don't trust him to be God. And if you go there, Brother Larry, and take the place of God, Brother David, he never comes home. Because he doesn't have to. I think a lot of times it's ignorant too. It's not just the fact that we're trying to save them, but it's that it's easier just to give them what they want. I'm going to say all the time. Not a lot of times. I'm going to say all the time. It's easier. It's easier because then we don't have to grieve and we don't, well, at least I know they're fed. At least I know this. They don't need to be. Yes. For him to get to be God. And you, you've said this before, that you look to other people for inspiration. You look to other people as the standard, right? You look for other people as the measurement because they tried to be God. Somebody came to me the other day. This was a private conversation. I'll try to keep it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep it private. But we got to talking about co-signing. And... Uh, and I said, do you know that it is against the Bible to co-sign for somebody? If you co-sign for somebody, you're violating the word of God. And the Bible says, when you read the word, it says, go as fast as you can 
and begging to have your name took off. It does. It's there. But here's the deal. You know why they do that? Because you ain't helping them get out of their mess. Right. Right. Yeah, my daddy signed for me to get a car when he was sick with cancer. But let me tell you what. I'd have paid that bill and went hungry. Okay? You know what? I was 23 years old. I'm 48 years old. Ain't nobody ever had to co-sign for me again. Yeah. You know, but, but here's the deal. Is the word true or not? Yeah. It's, it's in there very clearly. But here's my point. Here's my point, Brother Terrence, is we want to be God, and we want to fix things. And the real reason why we want to fix things is, Sister Stacy, we don't want to worry about it. We're tired of fretting about it. Or we want everybody to know we did it. I warned, I warned us tonight. Huh? Because, I, Brother Terrence, you see, I want revival. And I want revival. I want this place to be full. And we cannot continue to go to the hog pen and take care of people there. Because if we do, they'll never come to themselves. I said never. Go right ahead, Brother Ronnie. Uh huh. Next part two, okay. next Wednesday. Right. <laughs> Here's what I desire. I promise you, honey. I'm probably gonna need six pack in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. Just the way it rolls. Yeah. I, I'd like to come, but I've done been excommunicated. I came to recovery, and they told me I had to leave. I talked too much. I can't imagine that. They, they didn't tell me I had to leave, but they just put the pressure on me. They didn't say nothing, but I heard it with their eyes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Let's all stand. So here's what we can do with tonight's word. That Sister Nadine said, Grandma helped them out. My daddy helped me out. He didn't help me out because I didn't pay my bills. He helped, he helped me out because I didn't have none to pay. Okay? But going forward, Brother Terrence, I've got to follow the Word of God. And I felt the tension rise up in here. But you know what's going to happen at the Day of Judgment? I want you to know what's going to happen at the day of judgment. We've talked about this before, Brother David. He's going to open up the book, which is the book of life. Find out if your name's rolled in it. And then he's going to open up the books. Would anybody like to know what that is? That's the word of God. And we're going to be judged by it. I want to leave you with this. The prodigal got messed up. Because of pride, of never being hungry, and he was lazy. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to go to the Word of God next week. Now, if I know, if there ain't but like six people here, <laughs> because here's what we're going to find out. You're going to find out Sodom did not fall. Because of homosexuality, fornication, crazy sexual behavior. You want to know why Sodom fell? Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Sodom fell because of an abundance of bread, laziness, and pride. It's in the word of God.
I'd never read it before. It blew my mind when I read. And then the Lord started putting all of this stuff together. And I realized, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We're in a season of harvest. We're in a season of reaping. Do y'all know we have people come into this place? I don't know who they are, how they came, and don't know, neither does anybody else. But here they are. God is drawing them. We cannot be dysfunctional when they come. We got to get our stuff together. And so what everybody in the, under the sound of my voice needs to do is we need to go home, get the word out, and pray. Give me the courage to let you be God. All the time. Because, Sister Stacy, you're exactly right. It's easier to play God. But the only problem is I've got to do it again and again and again and again. And if I keep doing it, they will never come I can have the greatest service. I can have the greatest music. I can have the greatest preaching, the greatest anointing, and the greatest power of God. But if they don't have any reason to leave the hog pen, I've got to let him be God. Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you for the word. I thank you for truth. I thank you, God, that you're waking us up. I pray, Lord, that this word goes good. And I pray, God, that we're able to fight through the things that the enemy brings against us. I pray, God, that we keep moving forward. Have a great time Sunday for Mother's Day. Pray you'll bless everybody that's here with a desire to draw closer to you and hear the word of the Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Love every one of you.